and welcome to a brand new episode of the Traction.gg podcast, where we talk about racing games, racing esports, and on this episode, sim racing. We're going to be doing that with Jean-Francois Chardon, head of studio at KW Studios, the developers of Race Room Racing Experience, the now 10-year-old free-to-enter sim racing platform. He's worked at the studio, formerly Simbin and Sector 3, and now KW, since 2009, so he has a wealth of experience not only on race rooms development but also the history of the company we also discuss in this episode a little bit about a unfinished and now cancelled unreal engine prototype which you may or may not be familiar with and also why now is the year to watch race room because it has the backing of kw the suspension uh, manufacturer from germany and also the plan in place to hire more developers create an updated UI, changes to the ranked multiplayer system, and a publicly available content roadmap for the year ahead. So if you're watching on YouTube, please let us know what you think about Race Room and what you'd like to see in the future from it in the comments below, because the team is watching and reading. Uh, they have big plans, like I say, for maybe even a new graphics engine in the future if they've got the right development resource, which they are currently recruiting for. So it's all rather exciting and you'll hear about it here first. So this is very much one for those who are into race room or have played it in the past the cognoscenti hopefully here you'll find some brand new information about what they're going to do with race room in the future jf how are you today pleasure to speak to you yeah pleasure pleasure it's mine uh, tom uh yeah really good. doing well thank you hope the same for you yeah well i'm i'm excited because we're going to be talking about race room and maybe talking about some strange and unique tracks that are not in other sim platforms but before we get too impassioned about that. Uh, I just wanted, first of all, to uh, for you to explain your day-to-day -day role at KW Studios. So KW Studios makes Race Room. You are head of studio. What's a, a normal day look like for you? Well, it yeah, uh, it's a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, so a normal day starts off with uh, greeting the team, making sure that everybody's online and uh, at work and, um, and then... Uh, you know, as a manager, you end up spending your time uh, answering questions mostly or arranging for, um, let's say, for reference, for um, uh, reference talks, uh, getting the developers in contact with the, with the car makers, um, arranging for, the, for example, the um, approvals of a car. Let's say we uh -huh. work on the car and you have to contact the manufacturer, license the car and um, get it done, get the reference uh, for the developers. And then once the work is done, you have to show it back and say, this is the product now that we would like to release. Is it is it nice? Or uh, do you have any feedback? So then you ensure that um, that everything is according to the specs of the uh, licensor. So that's one part. So we don't always uh, do this. Um, I also make builds also. Uh, um, yeah, I do a lot of things. <laughs> it's, it's, quite a bit, it's a bit hard to summarize. <laughs> uh, you would think that the head of studio, you know, uh, sits down at his desk and just has meetings. Uh, but we are a bit special in a way that um, that we are a very small team. Uh, so I can't just uh, sit mm. on my chair and, and, and not do much. So I, uh, I'm pretty much hands on. on, hands the, on. Okay, the, so it's a active, busy role. It certainly yes. keeps you occupied. And motivated. Yes, absolutely. Just, just quickly then, you said it was a small team. How many people roughly are, are, are working on Race Room? Well, in Sweden, we are uh, six employees. One of them is a programmer, a game client programmer, and then we have a front-end developer. We have myself, we have uh, Georg uh, doing the, um, all the video trailers and all that. Uh, then we have two car artists. And then the rest of the team is uh, from around the world and uh, yeah. you know, uh, outsourced, so not directly employed, but... Um, with um, contract agreements and invoices every uh, every month. Okay, so, uh, I suppose you have total, to sort that out as well. <laughs> yes, and in, in total, it's roughly uh, fifteen people. Uh, okay, yeah, doing Kiri Studios. Interesting. Okay, so it's diminutive, certainly uh, punching above its weight. I think at the minute because it doesn't feel like a small team like that. It feels like it a, a much okay. larger one. Yeah, yeah, I All don't right. think so. Well, that's, well, that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you think Race Room is in a, a good place at present? Looking forward to 2023? Uh, yes, and the years after. Uh, okay. we are, yes, uh, we are there uh, for the long run. Um, so right now we have just um, 
So let's let's uh, start over with this question yeah. that um, the current state of Raceroom right now, we are not where we would like to be from a visual point of view. Uh, the graph, the graphic engine has some mm. um, uh, is showing his age, uh, pretty much. And then we have a pretty ins- unstable backend. Uh, all Raceroom players are pretty aware that every time we do release some content or have some massive uh, sales or anything, the backend goes down uh, under the load. This is something that um, th- th- these are two things that we are acting on uh, right now. So okay. we have just uh, hired a senior backend developer who is now tasked with uh, redoing this backend. Uh, improving the performance, uh, stabilizing, uh, stabilizing it uh, in a, as a first step, and then doing it new with a new code architecture and uh, a much more modern uh, infrastructure uh, overall. Uh, because I have to remember that this backend we have is from 10 years ago when Raceroom was originally released. It was supposed to cater for a certain amount of players with a certain amount of content. And throughout the 10 years, there has been a lot of content that we have added yep. and every time we add uh it just you know makes that uh those servers even crack even uh quicker so um there is that so that we are acting now uh, on that uh, so expect some news uh, uh this this year already you know like in a few months mm. um to see some improvements on that uh, it's also an opportunity to rethink also how we sell content, how we present the content. Um, I don't know if you, you've seen, but in the last uh, year, the last month, we have redone, uh, we have started a project of redoing our UI, redoing our menus. So we started from the deepest level of menus, look like, um, you know, replays, uh, options and all that. And we worked our way back in, back to the top. And the last step was supposed to be, you know, the main menu, how you, how you start a single player event, how you end up in ranked multiplayer, um, that kind of stuff. But we had to stop short there, um, because it required new backend features, which we were not able uh... to uh, work on back then. But this is now uh, addressed, so um, we will continue and finish that project uh, and bring a, bring a, a new UI to Race Room. Ah, I see. Yes, because there was like new menus for like settings and field of view in the cockpit and stuff. This was uh, exactly. was it last year sometime. It was yeah. really a nice improvement. But yeah, the front end of the game remained the same, and you, that's when you thought, ah, okay. Yes, so we need some the, further investment to the back end first to restabilize that, and yes, then because you can move forward. Every menu we 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 redid, uh, we tried to make as useful as possible. We with always the the thought of the user and um, what is actually useful uh, in that menu. So uh, we took the time to properly explain everything about the false feedback. For example, if you go into settings, you go false feedback. Everything is clear. Um, yeah. It's something I've been struggling is, uh, with as a, as a user in the past. Like, what is what does this mean? Uh, what does mm-hmm. that slider mean? And then, yeah. uh, it's something we we do see a lot of users do. They take a slider, they just go extreme to the right, extreme to the left, and then uh, without really understanding what it does, but then mm-hmm. it feels uh, different. Um, but they don't know exactly how to set it up. And uh, for for a long time, Raceroom had. I have, in my opinion, too many force feedback settings, too many uh, opportunities to mess it up. And it was um, uh, last year that we redid the force feedback uh, entirely. And as a result, the UI um, could be very much simplified to just a few sliders. Uh, and it will feel as it should. Um, and you, you can't really mess it up. And if you have access to something, it's properly explained. Yeah. So we had some some good uh, good feedback uh, uh, also from um, uh, wheels manufacturers who uh, I can't name them but uh, who sure. were like glad to see somebody or, or some game properly explaining it and yeah. and doing it right. So um, we took some pride in that. But to go back to the uh, menus. Uh, every single menu we redid, we wanted to make as useful as possible. So when we redid the replay interface, we also brought uh, some camera edition movements, so some you know uh, keyframes uh, edition to make some nice uh, uh, some nice shots of uh, that that would be dynamic. 
we were, as I was saying, we were working our way back up to the main menu. And for the main menu, one of the things I don't like with the current main menu is obviously it's white. It's like a flash of light in your face when you start the game. But also the way we present all the content we have, we have so much content. We are pretty much asking the player to recognize through, you know, a, a wall of class icons that we came up with. If it's not a licensed uh, series like DTM or, or something, there won't be a logo that you can recognize. So it's like uh, the, the way we present the cars is wrong, in my opinion, because you cannot really discover uh, everything we have uh, oh. at hand. It's making it extra hard for somebody to know or, or who starts the game for the first time to understand what is there to play with. Sure. Um, so And there is a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. And there's some cool stuff. Yes. So I wanted to make the main menu have some, you know, pointers as this we think is cool. You should try it. Uh, for example, okay, like yeah. uh, uh, pre-made settings, mm. because uh, the content presentation is one thing. But then after that, once you have picked a car you want, a track you want, you have like uh, 20 settings that you might might not understand exactly what they do. And um, I think it's it's too much. It's too. It should be like moved into an advanced tab and keep things simple so that in a few clicks without having to understand complica complicated uh, race regulations, you can end up on the track and racing. I see. So I um, also wanted to, to have, and this is where we hit some backend um, features that we didn't have, is to have single player events. So um, for a temporary, uh, for example, in, uh, we have time, time attack competitions right now where we loan yep. the content to you and it's fully free. You can mm -hmm. download the game for free and have a I don't know, uh, ADAC competition, and it's entirely free for you. Yep. I wanted to have that also for single player events where you can have a race against AI for, for two weeks. There will be uh, a sponsored uh, single player event, and you will have some uh, advertisement on the track side. And that would be, you know, preset. You have to click and press start, select maybe your livery, and that's it. Uh, but this, this, this is typically the kind of features that requires uh, backend work. I see. So uh, couldn't be done. It was a long way, uh, but I think I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was question number one. No, I'm kidding. All right. That was actually quite. That was quite. A, that was a really detailed answer, and it just goes to show. I hope it uh, makes how, sense. Yeah, it does make sense, and it just goes to show how much work goes on behind the scenes that's not necessarily obvious to the end user. What yeah, it takes to do that. Oh well, you can't change the front end menu. You know, just change change the color. It's not that simple, is it? It takes mm. investment and development and testing, and then also in your case, of recruiting someone who could just work on the back end and absolutely, and, like yes. and that's yes. a big job. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, you you mentioned there briefly. Correct me if I'm wrong. It, I believe Race Room was public there anyway. Sorry, it was developed for a while, but ten years old earlier this year, so a decade. Yeah. Uh, at what point did you join the project? Oh, I was, um, so I, I moved to Sweden for Simbin Studios back in the days in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, and back then we were working on um, Race of Seven uh, add-ons. So Race Injection, uh, GTR Evolution, STCC2 and all, all those. Some fantastic DLC there. If, if yeah. uh, people are listening and watching and haven't hadn't tried them, I think most, most of them are still on Steam. So, it is, uh, it is, and very cheap. You, still, you should get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Although one thing I really found difficult was, this is very random, uh, I wasn't going to ask about this, but there was a Andy Prio Crown Plaza DLC. I you don't know. A, I joined I know, after. Gotta, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still works, but you've got to do, do some things. But that's fantastic. Okay. Cause, yeah, I, cause I don't know about that. Uh, when I joined, it was already a, a done yeah, deal. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it was um, some business deal there, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But so so you, you joined... activate it? Do you, can, do you know how yeah. to activate it? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Oh. You have to you have to Google some stuff because I okay. have it in my library, but then it doesn't initially work. But you have to download a file from somewhere, and, and then you're good. All anyway, right, right. I, I digress. But uh, and all the Swedish tracks and the Swedish cars were were big for me as well back in the day because I watched mm -hmm. STCC on, on the internet before YouTube. Can't remember what website it was. Via Play. Anyway, so. You joined when that's already sort of in motion, that's already been established, and then yes. you, I guess, you're working on what became Race Room. Is that fair? 
Yes. So I joined originally. I was um, I was called to come to Sweden for two weeks uh, to test something because I was a beta tester. So I was yep. a volunteer beta tester for Racer Seven. Uh, so I was reporting bugs and I was already annoying uh, some people who <laughs> keep working today. Uh, our programmer Robert uh, has fond memories of me complaining uh, for 10 years now right. uh, because I was uh, bugging him about uh, issues in Racer 7 and I still bug him about issues today in Racer Room. So it's. Um, <laughs> It's a good, nice continuation of the story there. Yeah. Um, but so I was called for two weeks in Sweden for to, to test something specific, which was um, an, um, a location version of the game. So something you can run it in cafes and, and bowling alleys. And I see. But the project ran a bit late, so I ended up staying a bit longer and then longer and then longer and I ended up being asked, "Can you move here because we need a QA lead?" And I. Um, originally joined uh, as a quality assurance lead uh, for Simbin. So I was uh, ensuring that Racer 7 was flawless, pretty much. And then back in the day, we were starting on um, a new project, a new generation uh, of, of games. We were calling it GTR3 already back then. Uh, we even have the GTR3.com at the, at the time and then um, and then there was a shift uh, of priorities, and it became uh, Race Room. What you what you see Race Room today could have been called GTA Three. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, if uh, yeah, if stars had uh, had a different alignment. Uh, yes, but they didn't. But still, <laughs> we ended up with Race Room, and that's that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And I could be wrong here, but I seem to remember that was a. Uh... If you play Race Seven now, some of mm -hmm. the advertising banners at the track are for Race Room. Yes, because Race Room was already a brand back then. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, it was, you know, Race Room location. So it, we had like, uh, like, I, like I was mentioning, you had like um, bowling alleys and uh, um, right. the Race Room Cafe at uh, the Nürburgring. Um, all kinds of locations a bit everywhere in the world um, right. had simulators that um, that uh, run the game. Uh, what people don't necessarily know is that Race Room Entertainment, so the German uh, part of um, mm. of you know the companies that uh, that make race room, um, they build simulators. They uh, they make uh, the brand called Track Time, uh, Asher Racing. Um, yeah, the, these old you know sister companies. I spoke to Martin Asher at the Sim Racing Expo last year. He's got some cool McLaren wheels coming out. Looking forward to seeing those. Yeah, me too. I hope uh, I get a sample. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Uh, but yes, um, so we, we do uh, simulators and um, like I was saying, we run them or bring them to events uh, for, for for any sort of uh, customer. Mm. Uh, some of those are location owners uh, who need I some see. side uh, activities for their customers. Like, you know, when you're bored of doing some bowling, you, you have some simulators <laughs> on the side. Race room as not a, a location based uh, simulator but race room as the free to enter let's say mm -hmm. simulator for home for home use over that your time working there have you had any particular high points it's been the the best moment so far high points i mean the the release itself uh was a nice um, is a nice memory of course um in 2013 because it had been like a, you know a development struggle to get there um as I was mentioning, we had like a change of a change of a shift in plans and shift in in orientation of the product, mm. which injected quite a lot of um, you know not chaos, but uh, suddenly you had to redo everything because um, wow. the the name was different, uh, the the business model was different. You had to go free to play, um, build a backend, build this and build that. So when we released the game, it was like, uh, if I remember well, it was a time attack, Aquila on Race from Raceway, and that that was all. It was uh, it was called a teaser or something. But uh, yeah, that was a, a a big moment. And then um, we kept adding content, kept working on the on the game, added the multiplayer uh, game modes, and um, and then Simbin went down. We to we continued and carried over a sector three, which was the second high points because mm -hmm. um at that point we you know took a bit of control on the product so we could reorient it um at the beginning of the 
uh, existence of race room it was trying to cater to a bit of everybody trying to do a lot uh, and failing at doing it right for all those people so we had like get real physics amateur physics different set of physics for each car mm-hmm. uh, didn't really make sense and also it was frag- uh, fragmenting a, uh, a user base that was already not super big yeah. uh, because you know sim racing is a niche uh, genre so if you have like a small user base and then you start inside the same game splitting them into oh you get real amateur novice like in three different bits um you're not you know you're not helping your case uh, i think so that was one of the first things we did um is reorient race room towards proper simulation with some classic driving assists if you need but you can drive with uh with each other even though you haven't clicked uh, the same assist um if you take an assist that gives you uh an advantage then you get some bop ballast on your car so uh so yeah we took a, a much more realistic approach mm. uh, uh, 2014 when we started sector three and then obviously now um you know as kw studios we are uh, fully in charge of the product which is uh, yes. even better because now maybe you would argue a bit late now uh with this uh, with this control but we are in control of the product so um That's good. we are we are free to bring a new engine to it and we are free to uh mm. um inject the much needed budget into the backend team and um, and recruiting programmers uh, so it's uh, it's uh, definitely right now is a, a third high point for me okay good so it was it's <laughs> the genesis the take back of uh, control a bit when simbin folded and then now yes. the kw studios era which mm-hmm. is looking promising for the future mm-hmm. so well, that's uh, that's a good overview that sort of helps summarize the the, the project as well through um <laughs> It's it's been a long ten years. Um, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of stuff that that have happened, and I could speak of you know for hours about uh, all kinds of uh, high points that. Uh, I should write a book one day. <laughs> I'm not sure who it, uh, who would be interested, but yeah, I would be. <laughs> okay, I will write a book for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you said there you had the freedom to implement a new engine if you wanted to. Is that something you would like to do over the next couple of years? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's much needed. You, uh, I'm sure you would agree that um, mm. we need we need some visual improvements to race from. Uh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to touch upon, just to I know we're talking about new stuff that's coming, but you mentioned it a few times, and I just wanted to dig deeper a little bit based on what you could or can't say about what I would know as GTR three. I know you said that race room initially had the name that, and then it, it switched. So you were talking there about Unreal technology prototype was moved across. I'm assuming that was. GTR three. What was your involvement in that in that title, if any? So yes, right. in in 2015 we made a, a prototype using a Unreal Engine, and that prototype uh, was you know taken away. Uh, so my involvement was uh, at that uh, from that point on uh, nothing. Um, we we didn't as sector three. We were only tasked with race room. Um, but like I said before, we are uh, we were and still are a skeleton crew. Uh, and maintaining race room was already enough to keep us busy um so we couldn't really um uh, continue growing or improving on the engine i just wanted clarity so so to read double down again on that it's mm-hmm. that sector three was working on un- an unreal engine prototype it went to simbin uk they did yes. some things mm-hmm. the project has now since ceased yes and then we move on with race room as it is uh, not on unreal at the minute and you're now hiring a new team to to press on yes but so yeah unfortunately because of what happened with gtr3 there you were waiting for some technology to come back and it, mm-hmm. it, nev- it never could do because that that project folded that's correct so that's now correct. we are pretty much at the same step we were at in 2015 um, right except but, now we are in we have the freedom of uh, expanding our own team um yeah. so that so is what when did kw get involved with the well uh i think kw was already involved when um when i joined simpin so 2009 ah, okay uh, because i think you know in race of seven we had the wtcc uh license and um, back then you already had kw sponsorship on 
all the cars of WTCC. And I believe, I'm not sure, maybe you should interview Klaus Wolfert about this, um, but I believe that is how we came to hear about um, Simbin, Henry Cruz. I and see. Us. And um, that's how we probably got the idea of investing into Prism, uh, into Simbin, sorry, back in the days. Um, so I think he took ownership of Simbin, uh, Simbin Studios, uh, but that was before I joined. So uh, I'm with you. Okay, so it's actually a long term thing. I thought it was quite. Oh, it's very long. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's always been the case. Always been. I around. see. I see. Okay, so let's see where that goes in the future. I know you can't. Yeah. Yeah, say too yeah. much probably there but that's good so i guess then and i was going to ask this later on but and i'm sure you read the comments all the time but you know race room doesn't necessarily have day to night cycles right mm -hmm. it doesn't have wet weather so in the future that's that's on the list is it well everything is uh, of course uh on the list of uh, Fair things we would like to do and uh for the anecdote it's something we we have tried to make happen in the current ah, engine interesting uh but not too satisfying results so it's like uh, you know some changes that are shelved and uh, um, you know and because of the some limitation of the engine we can't uh, have like more than a couple um, light sources just an example so if you have it lights uh, yeah. in the night it it works if you are alone on the track but as soon as you have other cars then the engine starts um, uh, complaining so that's um, uh, the, the way we go from here, either either we look at uh, an engine upgrade, trying to take what we have and, and improve it, uh, mm. bring direct, a new DirectX version, maybe some new uh, rendering techniques, uh, or uh, take uh, some off-the-shelf uh, engine. Uh, it's not only Unreal Engine. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's up to discussion. It's up for discussion, because when, yeah. when we do have this um, new team of programmers, then uh, they would mm. be the one you know, taking our hands and, and, and saying this is the best way. Uh, yeah, interesting. You said new team of programmers. I have seen, oh, was it on, did I see it on LinkedIn somewhere that they're, they're, you are actively recruiting for KW Studios, yes. right? So yeah. that when you said right at the start, you know, in it for the, not just this year, but the years going forward, mm -hmm. you, you're building the team as well at the minute, right? Absolutely. Uh, for the reason we just explained. So um, yeah. right. uh, now we, we have, uh, a backend team uh, that um, that is starting to stabilize the uh, server infrastructure behind Race Room, and we now need a game team, a game programming team, uh, to uh, uh, to help with the future of the tech. Yes, uh, yes, the cool shiny stuff that people see. Yes, <laughs> looking forward I mean, to it. it. Yeah, mind you, it's uh, it's um, it's really the visuals that we lack. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because the the handling is there, force feedback is there, the sound is mm. simple. Um, we need to uh, to uh, bring improvements uh, visually. And uh, the engine sounds—they're always amazing in race room. I think. Okay, thank you. C can you yeah. just talk about quickly how you go about that process? Uh, well, it's um, uh, you know at the beginning you asked me uh, what what does a, a head of studio do? Uh, yeah. One of the things that uh, is a nice memory is uh, going to track race tracks and putting microphones into in, inside of cars. Um, we have um, obviously a sound uh, designer, Anthony Anthony Montel, uh, who's been uh, with Simbin even before I joined, um, wow. and uh, he's the magi magician behind the behind the sounds of uh, Race Room, Race uh, Race Seven, and all that. Um, so. So yeah, it's uh, it's always nice when we can go uh, to tracks, <laughs> uh, record some cars, and and geek out in front of uh, uh, that's cool a, racing part. That's a good part of the job, isn't it? Oh no, I need to go to the racetrack to watch some racing. It's the best to record sound. The best part. <laughs> yeah, it's the best part. And sadly, I'm not going to Nurburgring 24 hours this year. Ah, but um, yeah. Do you have a particular you know racetrack or race event that you enjoy going to? Would well, it be I'm, the 24 uh, of Nurburgring. Originally, I come from Belgium, and my uh, hometown is uh, Liège, and uh, that means spa is in my heart as a special with a special place. Uh, it is a special place. But um, uh, yeah, spa is uh, my all-time favorite. Uh, nice. But now I live in Sweden, and I have to say that Falkenberg and Mantorp are are uh, tracks. very very fun. Uh, great flow on both. It's um, 
uh, if you haven't tried them, you, you should definitely give them a go. Um, uh, as a former Swedish racing nerd, that's why I play Race Room. Race Room. The, those those okay. Swedish tracks. So I have definitely tried them. But yeah, if anyone listening or watching hasn't tried those tracks because they're not outside of Sweden that well known, I don't think. I mean, uh, Mantop was used for um, World Touring Cars and a, was it a former Formula One track as well, I think? An FIA GT. But Falkenberg certainly hasn't, you know, it's yes, really it's like one of those it? you know local tracks that uh, yeah. nobody nobody would know outside of Sweden. But it's uh, it is small, it's narrow, and I don't know, it's just simple and has this flow that that you can't stop lapping it. It's um, it's really uh, really nice. Yeah, and uh, when I like uh, slight tangent is gonna stop. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. That doesn't have much of a flow, but it's very I'm not tight going and to teach you Swedish. Okay, how do you say it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I do speak a bit of Swedish, but I don't have the, uh, the authority to, uh, to to teach anybody about the, the pronunciation. Okay, we'll go with Knutstop, but I don't know if that's Knut correct. Stop. Knut, yeah. Knutstop, it's probably, uh, it's pretty yeah. good. Mm. Yeah, uh, but that's a, that's a great little circuit. It's, it's very different but if you know brands hatch indie in terms of how compact it is and how it has undulation changes there's a slight similarity there so i, I recommend that one as well mm. that's cool um i just want to touch upon another really fantastic track which i just saw you announced a roadmap of dlc for this yes. year ahead i thought that was yes. very exciting something quite new for the for the platform so you had drivers pack in december on the edge pack uh last month yeah april mm -hmm. but then you've also announced okay there are going to be Regular, regular updates. No. So, first of all, before we talk about specific contents coming there, because I was referencing the track Po, which I think is great. But uh, what's the thinking behind this uh, structured approach and letting well, people know ahead of time? Yeah, because it's something that we want to change also um, in the way we communicate. Uh, yeah, because it's important that people understand that we are there. We are there for. Uh, this year and the years to come it's not um uh, it's not that we're going away or it's not uh, that we have stopped anything um so i think it's important that people have faith that they can keep you know uh yeah. playing and uh, there will be more coming so i think it's um it's a nice um i think it's a good idea but uh it's a bit early to judge you know how the the um uh reactions uh, have been sure. or will be uh but um, certainly, I think it's a positive that... step to at least say, "Hey, we've got some interesting mm -hmm. uh, DLC and cars tracks coming soon." That will yes. hopefully get the community hyped. Yes, and we, as soon as we can, we want to do similar things for features um, because yeah. when we do know, uh, when we do have a you know team of uh, more programmers and we have a better idea of what the plan is, we plan to communicate about that as soon as we can uh, so that um, as soon as uh, something is thought about but maybe we can also discuss you know our struggles and maybe we can communicate about um, yeah. the engine choice or what constitutes a, a good choice and what doesn't um, so it's it can be interesting you know some some transparency into the development mm. uh, is something I, I'm looking forward to sharing well I'm looking forward to hearing it because I think sometimes uh radio silence leads to people thinking oh yeah, yeah it's gonna shut down or something's going on and it might not be the case people are just hard at work but yeah you in see our all case, these rumors I mean, starting um, and youtube videos and etc like this yes in our case the radio silence was uh pretty much just uh re re, re, re kicking kickstarting uh Cambridge studios uh setting up structures because we know we want to grow the team so we need to have you know something strong mm. uh that can welcome uh all those people um in sure. a nice and uh, organized uh, fashion so um we took a bit of um, distance and, and set that up and now we are uh we are in a good good spot good position uh, fantastic to keep going yeah, so then uh, first, the next content as we are speaking soon is the BMW M4 GT3. Correct, yes. Looking That's forward coming to that like, car? Oh yes, I mean any uh, GT3 uh, coming, coming in, like a uh, current generation of GT3 is always uh, going to be a success uh, among the players and uh, would be a nice addition to uh, the ranked uh, combinations. So uh, Ah, yes. And then later in the year, there's going to be a, a new Porsche GT3 alongside the Cup Correct. car and... 
uh, ooh, nine four four or nine two four? I was going to four four turbo. Four four. Yeah. Yes, that's so, no, that's a cool one. So you got the two it is, contemporary it is. ones, but there's this classic it Furio, is. which and is there is a reason very for it. Room. It's yeah. So uh, BMW yes release uh, incoming uh, very quickly, yeah. um, uh, but. Um, the Porsche you mentioned, uh, there is the new generation of 911, so it's the 992. Um, yep. And we are bringing the GT3 Cup, uh, probably with the liveries of the Porsche Carrier Cup uh, Germany of this year. That's nice. And yes, it's very nice. I mean, I love the, the liveries of Porsche Carrier Cup. Um, mm. France, uh, Germany, they, they just look stunning uh, uh, on, the, on the car. And then the uh, GT3R uh, 992, and that one is uh, special for us because uh, it's going to be uh, entering DTM with uh, talk sport and uh, at, at yes at, at the at the wheel will be Tim Heinemann, uh, which comes uh, you know sponsored by um, KW uh, Suspensions, KW Automotive, um, which is our mother company. So um, so it's a um, sp- special edition for. Or race room. It's a special story because uh, we get you know insight uh, into the car, um, precise handling feedback uh, before it comes out. So it would be, uh, I think, uh, a very nice, uh, a very nice piece of content. Um, am I correct in thinking I might have seen a livery during a test session, and it has race room on the car? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it says yeah. from sim to DTM. That's it. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it would be one, uh, one stunning uh, livery on the DTM grid this uh, this year. So you can't miss it. It's like a purple, pink, gray. Um, it's really, it's really nice. Uh, I can show so, you some some renders if you want uh, later. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really good. I think um, so. It's more than just a sponsorship of the car. You're going to get data and insight from it, which is the key thing, right? Uh, yeah, I mean KW is an uh, investor into this uh, this drive, so um, uh, hmm. directly sponsoring uh, Tim Heinemann for this. Uh, so yeah. we have uh, yes, race room logos all, all around the car. Uh, working in direct contact with uh, Tim about uh, the car in the beta right now. Um, so it's uh, it's very nice, uh, you know, uh, direct access to the car. Fantastic. And Tim Heinemann's a good driver. I think he's won the GT4. Yeah, the DTM category yeah. in the past. He's a f- former usually, still sim racing. Yes, uh, usually, uh, usually uh, sim racers do well in real cars. Uh, it's yeah. uh, uh, it's a nice. I, I like uh, to see that. Yes, yes, it's a nice um, uh, proof. I think that you know uh, simulation comes a long way now uh, to actually be meaningful. That the experience you get from the simulator is meaningful when once you are on the real track. Um, because you will have learned the track, you will have learned the, the uh, uh, how to how to break uh, at what point. Uh, you know, you will have learned a lot um, just from the simulator. Yeah, and then to go with those two cars, the nine four four as well, which is a retro so, yes. classic. Yes. So in race from right now, you have um, Porsche Carrera Cup history uh, from the nine six four. Uh, the very first Porsche mm-hmm. Carrier Cup uh, version yep. um, to the most modern. And one thing that was, in, in my opinion, missing was the origin of Porsche Cup. And before the 964 was the 944 Turbo Cup, um, which is the car we are bringing now uh, to race room. Um, and it's um, it can come across as a choice because it's you know not the typical Porsche, it looks um, it looks a bit different, and uh, the engines in the front. <laughs> I think that's just you know one of the things that make it cute and make it um, appealing uh, because yeah. it is a bit different. It's it's still part of Porsche history, um, uh, a big piece of Porsche history because it was you know the beginning, like I was saying, the beginning of the Porsche Cups. Yeah, and, and again, just the, go- uh, the headlights going. Uh, oh, will they, will <laughs> they do fun. that in the game? Yeah, in yeah. The yeah, I, I love a pop would... headlight. It's a shame that no cars are made with them anymore. Pedestrian safety and all that, but still. Yeah. Okay, good. Pop up headlights confirmed for race room. That's what I want yes. to see. <laughs> and so that's coming in uh, July <laughs> as part of a pack. Yes. And then later in the year, you've got Christmas special and stuff. And in October, for now, is 
Expo, which is the cir- street circuit in France. I was just watching some TCR Europe at the weekend. Mm-hmm. And that's been in Race 07, some of the Simbin titles as well. So the, the, the studio, let's say, has a good uh, legacy with that particular circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, why yeah. that one? Why that one? Well, uh, because it is a street uh, circuit and because we have a long history of touring cars uh, yeah. in um, in our pedigree. So Racer 7 and uh, it's uh, touring cars is something we do really well. Uh, TCR, WTCC, all the all those seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, door-to-door racing is something you can actually enjoy in race room um, because it's, you know, we have the net code is done so that you can, you can you know, sc- race door to door without uh, somebody going uh, to to the moon and uh, and back, um, so it's um, uh, yeah. Touring cars uh, is a focus, and and Po is you know one of those iconic uh, places. It looks uh, it looks amazing, and it's um, very very thrilling um, to go high speed and into those uh, small streets. You have this chicane yeah. with the wall coming at you um, very quickly. Um, so it's. Um, uh, it was a no-brainer that we wanted to do that. It was a lot of effort, though, because um, you know, a city track, um, it's a lot of work from outside because you have a lot of buildings, uh, obviously, mm. to to create. So it took um, it took a few a uh, few months of just making buildings, redoing the entire city wow. around the track, uh, in really really uh, nice details. Um, Powering cars, the street circuits, is one of the reasons. That I first downloaded Race Room because I wanted to drive Macau, yes, with the World Touring Cars and the Lada, for example, and that's you know mm-hmm. not available anywhere else. And Po is another another track that you don't often see elsewhere, so mm-hmm. that's nice to tie in. And I think that's going to come with some special touring car uh, content. So I'm looking forward to seeing whatever that. that yes, the exact content of that uh, touring car pack is uh, to be confirmed, to be announced. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. But one thing I was going to mention was speaking of touring cars. Obviously, the FIA WTCR no longer exists, mm-hmm. sadly. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, there's been some dr- dramatic changes behind the scenes with DTM, Gerhard Berger, I think, basically shut down the company but sold the rights to ADAC. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were two strong official licenses that Raceroom had. So was that a, a turbulent time? Yeah, it was a bit of a um, um, shift uh, for us because uh, we became used to our schedule of having esports um, yeah. starting to work on the, all the little uh, liveries for for the spring and for the opening of the season and uh, it was becoming a routine uh, for us and then suddenly um, it had to stop so um, so f- with DTM we didn't know exactly for sure uh, what was going to happen. Thankfully, it went to ADAC, and uh, ADAC is one of our strong partners already. Uh, yep. We have GT Masters um, in, as part of the, the race room set of licenses. And um, yeah, so of course, you have to start uh, again renegotiating or, or uh, reaching out to um, the new management of those series and, uh, and see what we can do together. So. Um, uh, I don't see the DTM um, collaboration with Race Room ending because of a change of uh, DTM manager, manager. Um, in, on the opposite. I mean, we have now a Race Room driver uh, on the starting grid Twice. of DTM, so it, it would be a shame if we didn't do it. Um, yeah. So, um, and, and with regards to uh, the BTCR, um, there is still, you know, the TCR, uh, WSC uh, that we can speak with and, mm. and try and, and get something uh, going with them. So um, uh, last year, I think they had the eSport events um, that they they run by their own, on their own. We're using a mod on um, ah, yes, the title. Mm-hmm. Um, but this season, maybe uh, maybe they want to uh, to do it uh, with us. So let's see. One of the things that make race room still relevant today, despite the uh, you know the, the, the graphics and the visuals that are a bit uh, showing their age, is um, the anti-cheat protection, and it's a big topic right now uh, in sim racing. And uh, I'm rather you know satisfied with the anti-cheat protections that we do provide. Um, right now, you have uh, you know something that players can complain about uh, is that race room is an online only or requires online connectivity 
all the time as you are mm. playing. You cannot play Race Room Offline, uh, which a lot of people or, you know, see that as a disadvantage, but uh, it allows us to uh, ensure that the competition is fair and uh, detect and uh, act on any uh, uh, cheating event that has been detected. So um, that's, uh, that's, I think, really uh, an advantage uh, that we have at the moment. So it's a robust system, and that's one of the reasons why the, the platform is always on the internet, as you said there, is to help. One of the reasons is to help prevent any che yes. cheating. Because you have, over the years, done many esports competitions yes. that are highly competitive. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way of modding or cheating the system, I suppose, at the minute. Uh, there is not uh, a known way. There is always yes. going to be, you know, it's always going to be a chase. Uh, Right. an egg chase because you will come up with a new uh, way of detecting something and they will come up with uh, a new way of bypassing it um, but i think at least we're making it very very hard uh, to right. to not get spotted um, because um, yeah because we i have this uh, tool that just uh, um, yeah, I can't, I can't. I can't go into details. No, uh, don't explain. You can't explain. I can't words. explain it. No. <laughs> I can't. But explain it's, it. it's front of mind, and it's something that you've always been thinking about for many years. Yes. Well, it it actually came from those esports events uh, because we had so many high level from home um, um, events. We we had to have uh, security. Um, mm. So um, yeah, it's it's when when we spotted some some events some some cheaters uh that we came with you know new ways of um uh new ways of detecting it and, and mm. banning those people so that helps with it being um you know a usable sustainable secure platform for future esports events hopefully yes i mean right now um you can go in uh, and, and play ranked uh, with uh, absolute certainty that the other guy is not cheating um, which is which is good peace of mind so, you know, if you lose, it's your fault. Exactly. <laughs> you have no excuse. <laughs> uh, one thing I enjoy is, yeah, you have the, the, the competitions where it's almost like a, a leaderboard, and then you can um, qualify for an event, whether that's an eSports championship or a community event. So recently you had the Bathurst two hours. Yes. Um, you know, what's next for, I suppose, the competitive side of the platform? Any definitive plans at the minute or not? Uh, yes. So... Um, you know, I was mentioning before all the features that um, we had in mind and we had to stop uh, because it was requiring, you know, a backend senior developer. Sure. Uh, developer. Um, one of those was, like I said, the uh, main menu and how you discover content. But um, the the other main pillar was the uh, ranked multiplayer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that has been um, stopped short of um, becoming a, 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 a full-blown feature. Uh, so it was supposed to have, you know, a split, uh, sign up for the event and uh, you have like 50 players and they are split into mm. player, two, two groups based on rating. So all the basics have been made. So all the calculations of your rating are there. The servers can be ranked and everything that you see in Race Room today exists except for ranked series, ranked championships, uh, scheduled events where you can sign up and things like that. Um, when we want to do this, like the event you mentioned, the two hours of Bathurst, um, it's a lot of manual uh, work because you have to email, uh, send a driver briefing, um, con constitute the grids, constitute the splits. Um, you know, it's a lot of manual work at the minute. So, uh, the goal is still today to bring that feature to completion. So I have uh, ranked series, ranked championships, um, you know, fully in place. Um, and it's not just you going into multiplayer and going through a list of, uh, yeah. Take of the servers box. and right, uh, looking for ranked. And, you know, it's, it's a very annoying way of doing this. Um, uh, but uh, but in, instead you will have like very much uh, like in games like Gran Turismo where you have uh, uh, daily races and you can yeah. click to sign up and then you can do something else while mm. you wait. So um, all the uh, all the basic is there implemented already. All we need okay. is now the backend. 
Um, okay, so that's part of the part of the plan as well. It's not oh, yes, yes. single player stuff. It's how to step on from the ranked experience, which, which was introduced a couple of years ago from memory. Yes, or yes. Eight ago, so. Which and it's definitely functional. It works, but you're right. Mm -hmm. There's no sort of overall sheen or ease of use. So mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing that. And I suppose uh, I, I guess my takeaway from our conversation is that there's been some tumultuous times, but you're in a good place now yes. with the backing to bring through the ideas that you know could have happened in the last couple of years and that's yes. what you're aiming for not just the new content this year but to to really take things forward yes now it it actually feels that we are in control uh, so we can um we can move the product in the direction we want uh, so that's really a nice uh, nice change uh, well i have this positive feeling for a while so it's uh <laughs> Good. I can I can see in uh, your expression, your facial expression there. You, you, you know, your eyes light up when you're thinking, "Oh yes, all these exciting <laughs> plans that can come." So, yeah, that, and that's great. I think for the sim racing space in general as well, a, a competitive race room is only a good thing, and it pushes everybody forward, doesn't it? And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely, um, that's a, that's a very true. Um, yeah, yeah. And then from my side, get more tracks that are not available in, uh, elsewhere. <laughs> I love it. So that's what I'm here for. So, uh, JF, it's been a, a yes. pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time and best of luck with the year ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, for your time today. Yeah. yeah, and we can't wait to see what's in store, not just this year, but for the next few years as well. Can't wait either. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thanks again to JF for his time. And I really hope if you're into sim racing and playing Race Room, then you got something out of that interview because there's quite a lot of information to take in there that's not really been heard before, especially about its plans for development and how it's in a good place now to build on, not just this year actually, but for the next several years. So very much looking forward to, and I speak for everyone at the Traction team and I hope in the sim racing community, a competitive, updated, newly de developed and DLC fed race room racing experience. If you enjoyed the show, again, please leave a comment below with what you'd like to see from race room and pros and cons at the minute and how they can improve things because I say they are listening and they are actively developing. Uh, also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then please do rate, subscribe and follow on there. On YouTube, subscribe and like, that'll really help us out as well. We'll have more podcast episodes coming soon. Some will be on YouTube, some will just be on the audio only platform. So do keep an eye out on Traction website and social media and you'll be able to find out when the latest episode is available. But for now, thanks for listening. Keep it pinned.